I was 14 years old inside of a bowling alley, burglarizing an arcade game. And upon exiting the building, a security guard grabbed my arm, so I ran. I ran down the street and I jumped on top of a fence. And when I got to the top, the weight of 3,000 quarters in my book bag pulled me back down to the ground. So when I came to, the security guard was standing over top of me and he said, next time you little punk, steal something you can carry. And then one day, I was talking to somebody and he was telling me about this robbery that we can do. And we did it. The big homie told me this, money rules the world and everything in it. And in these streets, money is king. And if you follow the money, it'll lead you to the bad guy or the good guy. Soon after, I committed my first crime. And it was the first time that I was told that I had potential. At 17 years old, I was arrested for robbery murder. And I soon learned that finances in prison rule more than they did on the streets, so I wanted in. One day, I rushed to grab the sports page of the newspaper so my cellie can read it to me. And I accidentally picked up the business section. And this old man said, hey, youngster, you pick stocks? And I said, what's that? He said, that's the place where white folks keep all their money. <laughs> and it was the first time that I had saw a glimpse of hope, a future. He gave me this brief description of what stocks were, but it was just a glimpse. So at 20 years old, I did the hardest thing I'd ever done in my life. I picked up a book. Trying to learn how to read, the ostracizing from my family. I was so excited to be reading that I read everything I can get my hands on. Candy wrappers, clothing logos, street signs, everything. I mean, I can actually now for the first time in my life read. The feeling that I got from it was amazing. And then at 22, feeling myself, feeling confident, I remember what the OG told me. So I picked up the business section of the newspaper. I wanted to find these rich white folks. <laughs> so I looked for that glimpse. Then I discovered that according to Market Watch, over 60% of the American population has under $1,000 in savings. Sports Illustrated said that over 60% of NBA players and NFL players go broke. 40% of marital problems derive from financial issues. Financial illiteracy is a disease that has crippled minorities in the lower class in our society for generations and generations. And we should be furious about that. This idea that only professionals can invest and manage money is absolutely ridiculous. And whoever told you that is lying. A professional is a person who knows his craft better than most. And nobody knows how much money you need, have, or want better than you. Which means you are the professional. Financial literacy is not a skill, ladies and gentlemen. It's a lifestyle. Financial stability is a byproduct of a proper lifestyle. A financially sound incarcerated person can become a taxpayer citizen. And a financially sound taxpayer citizen can remain one. This allows us to create a bridge between those people who we influence, family, friends, and those young people who still believe that crime and money are related. So let's lose the fear and anxiety for all the big financial words and all that other nonsense that you've been out there hearing. And let's get to the heart of what's been crippling our society from taking care of your responsibility to be better life managers.